So we're set up with strobes and we're set up for full length. We've got our sweep out, we've got our tile board down for the reflection. I've got a light on each side of uh, the set. I have the black drapes up to help kind of kill some of the bounce that's going to come off of these walls. The ceilings are high enough. I really don't have to worry about that. I've got my background lights turned off right now. I'm trying to find my initial exposure. And if you don't have a light meter to run around and take meter readings with, start simple, start easy, start with one light at a time. So I've got a basic three foot by four foot softbox on page. It is sitting uh, about four feet away from her. And then uh, Paige is again about nine feet away from the background. So uh, I'm going to first find my exposure on Paige. So the first thing I'm gonna do is curse at my camera. God bless America. Oh. First order of business is getting a good exposure on Paige from the main light. Uh, I'm currently shooting at ISO 50 at F8 at 200th of a second. Uh, let me show you what this looks like if I take a picture without any flash, it's going to be pretty much a black screen. So all the light that we're seeing in the photo is from the flash. Now I'm at F8, I don't necessarily uh, need to stop down anymore. That was at quarter power on the Alien B1600. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to, let's say eighth power. I'm gonna dump the light out of that. Bring my flash back up. So I am at eighth power on my main light. I'm at F8, 200th of a second, ISO 50. Take a picture. And what I'm looking for is a good exposure on page. I don't want any of her white clothing to blow out. I want skin tone to be good. Let me take a look at that. That all is looking okay. And it's sharp. And since it's sharp and all of that, I'm gonna go ahead and just lock down my focus and be done with that. So, exposure on page looks good. Next up, turn on your background lights. If you're just getting started with this, go ahead and start at a fairly low power. Start low, keep them even, symmetrical across your set. And while I'm here, I'm gonna just double check, standing in at page's position, to make sure that these background lights aren't hitting her. And those barn doors are keeping the light from Paige. I'm gonna take a shot. Now my camera right light is not firing. Caleb, can you grab me two double A's? <laughs> do, 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 do. Here we go. Seriously? No. It's a bad. Zach, test fire. I have the light set on page. Now I need to set up the light for the background. So I've turned on the background lights to a low power. I think they're on like 64th power. Let's take a test shot. See what pops up. And I've got a little bit of light hitting that background, but it's definitely not popping to white yet. I need more light on the background. So, I'm going to put more light on the background. I'm at 64th power. I'm gonna go ahead and take these up. Let's go to quarter power. I mean, I need a good bit of light hitting this background. So let's put a good bit of light on the background. And that's about it. I can see that the background is just starting to go to white, but I want the back edge of that tile board to go completely back into the background seamlessly. So I could use a little more light. I still have very good contrast on page. I'm not losing any detail or, or weirdness in her hair here. So we can put a little more light on that background. Half power on the background lights and eighth power on the main light. We should be pretty much on the money. Yes, that's what I'm wanting. Look at what the white tile board is doing for me. It is giving me a clean white surface for Paige to stand on and it's giving me that nice little reflection. 
if I didn't have that down, the entire floor area where she was standing would be this gradient of gray that I maybe don't necessarily want. And to get this right in camera without any uh, need to clean this up in Photoshop, you simply need to just lay out a couple more sheets of tile board so that you're covering that entire area. But for one person full length standing, you can pull it off with one sheet of tile board you will need to do a little bit of cleanup. We'll do that in the post-production part. But so far, this is looking great. Um, I have good contrast in the shadows. Her hair looks great. I don't have any weird chromatic aberrations in there from the background being too bright. And I've got plenty of detail uh, in her white clothing. It's separating off of the white background. If I open this up, let's go to... Uh, Let's go to F4, just so you can see. We're gonna be overexposed, bleeding into that background. We go to 5.6. Start to bring her back. This, I don't want to see anything that ever looks like this. If this white shirt is just bleeding off into white background, then you are overexposing your main light overexposing the main light or you have a background light hitting your subject um, or your back your subject is too close to your background some issue like that is happening but here at f8 perfect right there my exposure is dead on where i want it to be and that looks great now what i'm going to have uh page do we're gonna keep all the lights the same, all the exposure the same. And I'm gonna put that right there. Uh, go switch into something that's black. We are on all the same settings and we have the same exposure. So no matter if your subject is wearing white or if your subject is wearing black or if your subject is wearing any color, or if you have a white subject or a black subject or a brown subject or a green subject or whatever you're shooting, once you nail your exposure, then you're set. So what I'm gonna do now is take a series of pictures to show you kind of an underexposed background, an overexposed background, and the properly exposed background in a series of headshots. Let me get that done real quick.
let's start to change this up a bit. First thing we're going to do is kill our main light. And I've brought in some just basic bounce cards that are a clamp to stands. And I'm going to bring these in close. You're not claustrophobic, are you? Perfect. And what I'm basically doing with these cards is catching the light coming off of the background and then bouncing it back into Paige's face. And I'm going to bring these in really close. I'm at eighth power on each light on the background. Eighth power on the background. And I am at 2.8 at 200th of a second at ISO 50. And I'm gonna focus right there. Perfect, hold that. Test my exposure. Now, test my focus. Everything's in focus. It's a, just, it's a nice clean kind of light. I kind of dig it. Uh, let me show you what this looks like without the bounce cards. Right there, focus. Focus. Okay, good. All right, that's without bounce cards. Now let's bring in another main. All right, I'm gonna bring in a strip. Now I'm gonna bring this in close. I'm gonna go ahead and kill these background lights. And what I wanna start to do now is make the background dark. So I have a 50 inch strip box. This one, this particular one is a Westcott and it has a grid in it. And I am going to bring it down to its lowest power setting. Dump the power. I'm at 2.8 ISO 50. Turn your face just a little bit right there. Perfect. Hold that. And let's just take a test shot. See where we stand. We're a little bit overexposed. And I'm a little bit out of focus on the wrong eye. So I'm going to stop down to about 3.5 focus. Perfect. Good. So now I have a dark background. That's fantastic. Face back to me just a little bit right there. Hold that. And head tilt just a bit right there. Hold that. Eyes down. Good. Now, let's say that, uh, you know, you want a little separation. You can kick one light in. I'm going to bring in a background light. I'm going to bring its power down a lot. Let's go ahead and just kick it to like 256 power. Just gonna barn door this in just a little bit. Perfect, right there. Hold right there for me. We get focused. Fantastic. All right, let's go with a grid on the background. Doot, 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 doot. Just a 20 degree grid, popping a little circle of light. Got an old masterly kind of look. Perfect. Now looking down off camera. Great, right there. And then eyes to camera. Let's kill the strip. Like this. You doing all right? You need anything? No? Okay, I love this will just be a quick edit. Bam, 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 bam. Well, the background light, you're supposed to ask. Perfect. That's fantastic. You don't have it. Looking for water, but I'm sure you don't. Hold that. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now that's a straight flash. Let's try F7. Right there, Paige. That's perfect. Hold right there. Do, 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 do. That's pretty cool but I want to get her shadow a little more off the background. So, you're doing great. Perfect, sharp as can be. And let's say you only have two lights. You don't have a third uh, light for the background. If you're just shooting headshots, you can bring in that second light, hide it behind your subject different modifier and probably a shorter stand. No, I can do it. Turn this on back here. Let me drop this down. Perfect. Might be a wrap. We made it black, we made it white, we've made it gray. 
Let's call this a wrap. All right, I am gonna show you what I do to this in post-production. This is gonna be very quick and easy. I'll talk about a few more things and show some examples on the blog post that is associated with this video you're watching. But basically I have my white seamless uh, shot, all color corrected and all of that. Notice that I shoot all of this vertical. The reason I shoot this vertical is I want to utilize as much of the resolution from my chip, my sensor as possible. And if I shot this as horizontal with a bunch of negative space off to one side or another, then basically I'm just throwing all those megapixels away, which I can add uh, here in post-production. Now, uh, disclaimer, there's a million ways of doing this. You may wanna do this in Lightroom. You might wanna do this in some other program, um, whatever, whatever. I'm gonna show you the basic things that I do and you can adapt this to your workflow however you would like. So first thing, we have a background layer. This is not uh, multiple layers. This is a locked background flattened image in Photoshop. And my background swatches over here uh, on the left of the screen are black and white. You can hit D for default, and that's going to set that to pure black and pure white. And I want pure white to be my background swatch. And then I'm gonna choose my eraser and I can have a pretty big eraser tool here. And I'm going to clean up the little edges and all the stuff, the crap I see first. Just gonna erase that to white. Clean, simple, easy, easy to do. Now, I imagine that right down around her feet and at the bottom of the floor, it's probably not pure white. It looks pure white and it's probably fine, but you can check that by pulling up your levels. I'm holding my option key and then the right levels and I can see oh yeah see that there's a little bit of mess left down there on the floor not too much easy easy to clean up next thing I'm going to get is my dodge tool and I'm going to set it to highlights for the range I'm going to set the exposure to 5% and protect tones is turned off and I have a very soft um, brush very soft edges and then I just go in and just quickly paint. The nice thing about dodging highlights is you don't have to get in here pixel by pixel by pixel. You can just do a quick, you know, just kind of clean up of that area and you can check it again and yep, clean, perfect. Now, I said before, if you want a horizontal of this, there's a super easy way of doing it. I'm still a locked background layer. I haven't made this into any kind of uh, named layer or anything yet. My background swatch is still set to pure white. I am going to set that uh, back a bit and I'm gonna get my crop tool. Now I like to deliver a consistent set of images to my client, consistent and everything to aspect ratio and all that. So I'm gonna set aspect ratio, um, original ratio right here. And then I'm gonna hit these little arrows and that's gonna flip it to horizontal. Now you can drag outside of your image wherever you want this to be. Make yourself a new composition, however you want it. You might be making some sort of promotional card or a business card or a banner or whatever, whatever. And you hit return and there you go. There's your new composition. Now had I shot this like this in camera imagine my sensor here and here all of that would have been thrown away all that resolution natively from my sensor would have just been thrown to white when i can just make up white in photoshop really super easy i can add white but you can't really add much more resolution without starting to degrade your image now one thing to note Let's say you're going to um, display this on some sort of website or Instagram or something that has a white background. Well, your picture just goes off into nothing and it can kind of look weird. So there's two ways I deal with that. First one is a simple stroke. I'm gonna go to edit and I'm going to go to stroke and I'll put like a little tiny stroke on it. And then that way it, it 
<clears throat> and this way it, it shows your composition, it shows the boundaries of your photo. All right. Another way to do it that I do sometimes, um, I'll do this for Instagram or sometimes I'll do this for other sites or whatever, wherever I'm, I'm putting it. You may see this on the dead pixel blog is I'll bring up my levels and in output levels, I'll bring that down to like, hmm, I usually like, like about 248, 250. I, I bring the pure white down just under pure white under 255 and that way you can see that there is a boundary there somewhere you know i mean it's too much it's affecting your whole image um but that's just another way of doing it adding a little bit of a stroke or just bringing down your output levels all right um now lastly let me change this real quick we'll go to medium gray let's say let's say we're doing album cover I'm gonna do one to one square. Let me recrop this. And let's say we're gonna do this right here. Let's just say it's that, all right? Now you'll see that my reflection is getting cut off here. I'm gonna grab a marquee tool. I'm gonna to come in here just a bit and then I'm gonna get my selection tool and I'm gonna drag that out and call that a day. And now I'm going to make this a layer and I'm gonna make a new layer. And I'm going to drag that new layer under pages layer and I'm going to turn pages layer off and I'm going to let's just make a black and white gradient and let's make a radial gradient. Let's make it softer than that. Let's do that. Maybe you want this kind of soft little gradient going on back here. Now with pages layer selected, I'm going to hit multiply and that drops all of the pure white off. Now I'm gonna grab this background. I'm gonna pull that kind of soft white glow right behind her face in there somewhere. Maybe I'll drag this. It's just a gradient layer. You can drag this thing around all you want. And that looks kind of good. And you can go in and individually kind of clean this up if you want to. And if you wanna add some color to this, let's uh, say colorize. You want to go in and add some sort of color tone or something like that. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. Now then, um, black background, mainly what I do is the crop thing. So let's say we're going to go to uh, original ratio. We're going to turn that to horizontal. I'm wanting to make this into a horizontal um, picture. And there we go, horizontal picture and it's done. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video series, part one and part two. If you have any questions, comments, or concern, please hit us up on the Dead Pixel blog. Uh, we have a very active uh, comment community there, and I try to do my best to answer all of your questions you may have uh, there. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have an awesome day.